In this video, I want to take a look at solving three multi-step equations that have some interesting conclusions. Conclusions that are a little different than the equations you're used to seeing. In particular, I've noticed over the years that students often get these three types of equations mixed up. So the goal here is to discuss these types and hopefully alleviate any confusion that may arise in the future. So we have this first equation that you can see here. If you would like to try it on your own first, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll work it together. All right, it doesn't seem like this is any different than uh, maybe any other type of equation, so let's see what happens. We have some parentheses here, so let's go ahead and do some distribution here and distribution here so we can get rid of those parentheses. And when we do that, it looks like we'll have n minus 5 plus 10n, and then plus 8, and that will equal n plus, looks like 10n minus 10 plus 4. Okay, still doesn't seem like anything's out of the ordinary. So on this left side, we have a couple of like terms we can combine, and then our numbers can go together. Similarly, on the right side, the same thing. We can put those like terms together. So let's go ahead and do that. So the n and the 10n will make 11n, and the negative 5 plus 8 will make a plus 3. And so that will equal n and 10n will make 11n, and then negative 10 plus 4 We'll make a negative 6. Well, something interesting has arisen here. It looks like we have an 11n on both sides of our equation. So if we're going to subtract 11n from both sides using this uh, subtraction property of equality, what we're going to see are that the 11n's cancel from the left, the 11n's cancel from the right, and what we're left with is simply a numeric statement. Well, so here is one of the issues. If the goal of solving equations is to isolate the variable, well, there is no variable. All the variables canceled. So what do we do here? Well, we're left with a statement, and it's just a numeric statement. 3 equals negative 6. Well, in fact, this isn't even a true statement, is it? No, that's false. 3 does not equal negative 6. So what do we say about this? Well, we notice that all the variables have canceled out, so it doesn't really matter what value we plug in for our variable, they're always going to cancel. And you're always going to be left with a false statement. So what do we say about this? Well, we say this equation, in fact, has no solution because there is no value that I can plug into the variable that will end up making it true. So let's go ahead and take a look at this second example. Same kind of thing. If you'd like to try this first, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll work it together. So once again, I notice I have parentheses. So let's just go ahead and use our distributive property here and kind of do some simplifying. So it looks like 4 plus 5y minus 15 minus 2y. And that'll be that left side. And on the right side, what, 3y minus 6 minus 5. And same kind of thing, we've got some like terms on the left and some like terms on the right. Let's go ahead and just combine everything together as much as we can. Looks like 3y minus 11 equals, well, 3y minus 11. Well, all right, so same kind of situation. Let's go ahead and subtract 3y from both sides. And what we'll see then is, well, not only do those y's cancel from the left, they also cancel from the right, and I'm left with negative 11 equals negative 11. All right, so same situation. All the variables have canceled. So how can I solve the equation and isolate that variable if all the variables are gone? Well, you can't do it that way, can you? So all we can do is go ahead and look at the conclusion. So what do I have here? I have negative 11 equals negative 11. This is just a numeric statement. And in fact, in this case, it's a true numeric statement. So what does that say about the value that we can use or values that we can use for the variable? Well, in fact, it's the opposite of the last example. Anything we plug in for y will end up working in this case because what happened is that all the variables ended up canceling out, which means that no matter what I plug in for the variables, that'll end up canceling out and I'll always be left with this true statement. So in fact, it's quite the opposite of the last example. In this case, we have 
an infinite number of solutions that will work. Okay, and probably more specifically, for your answer, you can say all real numbers, because anything you plug in is going to work. So in this case, all the variables canceled, I was left with a true statement, so we're going to say that all real numbers are a solution of this equation. In this third and final example, it looks like we have another equation, and this time we're trying to solve for the variable p. So again, if you'd like to try this first, pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll see how this wraps up. Well, okay, I noticed that it looks like I have some parentheses, so let's go ahead and use my distributed property one final time. So 4p plus 1 on that left side will equal p plus, looks like 3 plus 6p minus 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean that right side up a little bit. So we have 4p plus 1 still on that left, and the right side will combine like terms, so p plus 6p will be 7p, and 3 minus 2 is a positive 1. So a little bit of a different situation. Last time, in the last two examples actually, our variables canceled and we were left with just numbers. But now in this case, it looks like both sides of the equation have a plus 1. So let's go ahead and subtract that 1 from both sides using our subtraction property of equality. And we'll see they cancel here and here. And we're left with 4p equals 7p. Well, okay, well that's uh, a little bit different than what we saw previously. But I will say at this point, since students are aware now that they can have equations that have no solution or perhaps an infinite number of solutions because all real numbers will work, they will often confuse this for one of those types of equations, even though it in fact is not one of those types of equations. So 4p equals 7p. So I wonder, could you think of a number that would work for p in this instance? 4 times some number and 7 times the same number. Well, let's go ahead and finish solving for p. So let's subtract 7p from both sides. And on that right side, it looks like everything cancels. So what do we have left? Well, that'll be zero. And our right, or our left side then will be a negative 3p. And so let's go ahead and finish this up by dividing both sides by that negative 3. And when those cancel, you'll notice that p equals, well, zero divided by negative 3. That'll actually be zero. So in this case, we have seen that Instead of the variables all canceling out and just leaving a numeric statement, in fact, the numbers have all canceled out and we're left with this variable statement, 4p equals 7p, which will always come down to just your variable equaling zero. And in fact, zero is the only value that will work and will make this equation true. So to summarize here, sometimes when you're solving equations, you'll be left with something at the end that seems a little out of the ordinary. So maybe all the variables cancel and you're left with a true statement like 4 equals 4, and that's going to be all real numbers or infinite solutions. Or perhaps all the variables cancel and you're left with a false statement like negative 2 equals 7. Well, that's going to be no solution because it doesn't matter what you plug in for your variable, it will never work. And finally, in the third example, we saw that when all the numbers cancel and you're left with something like 5x equals 2x, the value for that variable has to be 0.